Hi everyone, my name is Yves Salti. I'm part of the Azure AI engineering team at Microsoft, and I am delighted to be here today, not only because I'm escaping the darkness and the rain of Seattle to enjoy the beautiful weather in California, but also I'm really delighted to be part of this event and uh, because you know we are uh, a great collaborator with the Elastic team, and there are lots more projects to come from this collaboration. But first, before I start the, the presentation, I want to start with a PSA. We want, I want us to normalize small language mo models. We need to bring back some of the excitement around SMLs. There is a lot of hype around large language mo models, um, and I understand why. Let me take a minute just to juxtaposition the two, and I know it should be basic for most of you that are using probably both. But there is a place and time and a use case for the tra tra traditional model. And although generative AI has been in the forefront of a major hype for the past uh, three years, three plus years, AI and the, the traditional AI mo models have been around and you know, doing great, great work and ser service for the past 20 plus years. At Microsoft, we have developed uh, a plethora of these ser ser services. And in most cases, what we see when we work with customers is that they are going to combine uh, different uh, ser uh, AI ser services in order to have a more end-to-end -end scenario. So uh, there is a good use in developing and using and leveraging and integrating a tra traditional AI model. Of course, you all know the value and the excitement around the generative AI ones, the foundation mo models, basically like, you know, uh, trained on billions and trillions of different par par parameters. And they can do multiple things at the same time, which is actually kind of like the efficiency of the mo model. I, I want to talk a little bit about our collaboration with OpenAI. Uh, this is a journey that we started about three years ago, and it was the, you know, a strong vision from our CEO, Sa Satya, who is still very personally involved in uh, uh, the initiative. We kept we're getting um, daily emails from him, which is a good thing and a, and a bad thing some, so, so sometimes. But this is a huge bet that Mi Microsoft has, has done. This is a long-term co commitment that we're driving with the OpenAI team. Uh, basically, the OpenAI models are trained on the Azure supercomputer, com so we provide the, the capacity um, for them to train these mo models. And in return, we take them and we make them available in the Azure AI portfolio with a couple of modifications that I'm going to talk about. You know what these models are, and you probably have all used it and integrated in what you're doing. If not, I invite you to explore them. Uh, GPT-3, 3.5, 4, every week there is a new one, it seems, uh, which is great. Uh, it's the text generation mo model. This is very, very use useful to write personalized emails, to generate you know, human-like uh, con content, including the tagline that you see here. Codex is a very interesting one for developers. Uh, it pro provides um, a lot of efficiencies in how we code, and more importantly, in how we document, which is something that no developer wants to, to, to do and very few are very good at. Uh, and also, I think it democratizes, actually, who codes which can be a good thing and a bad thing. But uh, in most cases, you can really enable your business u users to leverage English as a pro programming la language so that they can develop simple applications for the work that they do, so that they can automate and they can optimize what they do every day. Uh, DALI is the fun one. I think it was men mentioned in the other press presentations as well. The opportunity to create, to, you know, kind of like use text to generate an image. This is a great way if you want to create a logo, if you want to, you know, create a com com campaign, a creative way to generate a really precise and innovative uh, image. And ChatGPT, which is the derivative of uh, the GPT mo model, which is the, the conversational AI piece that uh, you and your kids are using pro probably every day 
for their home homework. And uh, recently in their developer conference back in May, we announced a couple of additions. Um, and there are a lot of other announcements that will come in the next couple of months uh, with another event that, um, you know, we're really going to expand our collaboration with the Elastic team. Um, we announced uh, the on your day, day data capability, which is basically the uh, capability to uh, be able to ground the large lang language model that, that, that you have with your own da data. And this is a great way to augment the, the fun functionality of the mo model and make it very um, uh, relevant to the use case, the content that you have. So if you have customer content, if you have uh, customer records, partner records, CRM data, HR information. You can really feed that into the mo model and you can customize it this way. Uh, we also announced the provisioned throughput mo model, which is more of a licensing uh, model when you can reserve capacity for the, use for the use cases that you have. And this provides you the flexibility to really make sure that you have kind of like, you know, the, the GPUs need, need, needed in order to do um, the work that you need to do with your LLMs throughout a particular time. And then the third piece was around plugins, uh, which is basically, uh, I think that that was the initial thinking around the co-pilot uh, cap capabilities that we provide uh, through our other you know, non-AI pro pro products uh, like Microsoft 365, Bing, um, Dy Dynamics 365, and others. And uh, the goal is there to continue bring third-party uh, ser services so that we can augment the experience all up. A key thing that we are also very passionate about, and you know, we uh, did a lot of iterations in our Azure ML uh, plat platform to integrate a, res a responsible AI dash dashboard so that we can enable people that are developing models from scratch to really monitor the way that the models are developed, are trained, um, to eliminate or at least monitor any potential bias. Similarly, we've done similar uh, work in the Azure Open AI. Uh, mo models as well. So we add additional responsible AI capabilities. In this case, the thing that, that we announced a couple of months ago was the content safe safety uh, capability, which basically provides you the flexibility to really adjust it as ne ne needed uh, so that you can safeguard the experience for your use users. And you can adjust the content um, both on the model um, kind of like on the front end on the prompt side and on um, the model res result side. And you can filter for content around hate, violence, self-harm, etc. And the reason why I was doing the PSA in the beginning of uh, this uh, presentation was uh, to show that uh, uh, large language models is not the only op uh, option. And in most cases, you will have a lot of different uh, choices. And uh, from a Microsoft standpoint, what you know, are kind of like our feel philosophies that you can start as high as you want, meaning at the business la layer, because what we do, half of our engineering team is actually working with internal groups at Microsoft to continue it, uh, uh, integrating and infusing AI in all the pro products that we have. So we say, like, you know, try to kind of like, you know, start as high as you want, really activating your biz business use users, and you can do, th do that with Power Automate and the power tools that we have. And you can go as low as you need. There is a plethora of different AI mo models that can be accessed sim simply through an API. The Azure Open AI ser service mo model is part of that. But there are others that you can mix and match. And you see a, we see a lot of customers, actually, and part partners doing this mix and match in the capabilities so that they can create an end-to-end -end scenario. And you can go all the way down to the machine le le learning piece. So if none of these kind of like off-the-shelf tools or um, APIs work for you, you can really, uh, we provide you the ML plat platform to develop your own. Or if you want to bring your own kind of like LLM, you can use the Azure ML pla platform to continue the uh, iteration. Another thing that we're very, 
passionate about uh, is making sure that the service is enterprise le level. That means that although the LLMs are the same that you know, come from uh, the OpenAI team, we make sure that uh, they have the security, da data pri privacy, reliability, and responsible AI capabilities. You can manage them like any other Azure ser service. You can assign users. Um, so it's really enterprise re ready with enterprise uh, ready SLAs. A couple of uh, use cases that I want to also uh, point out. Again, the service have been the Azure OpenAI service have been has been around now for about 18 months. So we've been working with um, you know thousands of different cas customers. I'm going to share a couple of them uh, towards the end. But these are kind of like what we see in terms of scenarios and use cases. Let me know if you see the same from your end or if you have any others. Um, this list continues to really evolve. Uh, but the most uh, uh, kind of like uh, relevant, I would say, use cases and scenarios we see is around uh, uh, content generation, as I said, like, you know, create a personalized email, uh, tagline, whatever the case is. Um, also, some summarization. This comes uh, very handy in meeting notes, in industry or analyst events, um, in contact center scenarios where you have like you know long con conversational logs that you need to extract the sentiment and summarize and do some some you know take some action. Um, and then the code generation and the search pieces as well. And we see this across multiple industries and multiple sizes of, of customers because we work with enterprise customers, but we see great demand coming from the star startup side as, as well. And I know this is a night chart, but I just wanted to put some additional use cases there specifically for on your day, day data side. Again, you will see a lot really um, around contact center AI, chatbots, whether it's for internal or external use. Uh, document uh, in intelligence is really, really key. Everybody has a plethora of different contracts, uh, agreements, uh, forms, whether it's structured or unstructured day, day, data. This is a great way to kind of like, you know, really ground your mo models with the information that you have, whether it's a, a set of ma manuals and, you know, HR information or anything else so that you can really um, customize the, uh, the, the experience for uh, the other side. And here you'll see a very small sample of uh, all the customers and the partners that we're work working with. As I said, we're really excited about the collaboration and the ongoing uh, part partnership we're driving with the Elastic team. And we'll have more exciting things to share probably in the, the next two months. Um, and then I want to, I don't know what happened to the picture here, but consider this a CarMax web website. Uh, so we worked with CarMax, which is an online, um, you know, auto uh, retailer, and uh, basically the problem that they had is that they had uh, 11 years worth of customer rev reviews, and this is kind of like how customers buy, right? How others really like that particular car or mo mod model. So they had a lot of these different re reviews, but it was a very cumbersome process to uh, understand, kind of like, you know, extract the sen sentiment, summarize, classify them, and create marketing com campaigns. So they used Azure OpenAI, and within a little bit over a month, they were able to activate their marketing teams to generate these com com campaigns in a very personalized way. So again, the human was still in the center of the experience, but uh, the Azure OpenAI ser ser service provided them you know, with more tools uh, to be more pro productive and to make sure that you know they automate things that you know are not very interesting and don't re require critical thinking or cre creativity or other things that we humans are really good at or supposed to uh, another customer that we worked with in uh, Europe this time is uh, the insurance company national in Net Netherlands. in their case they had uh, again you know many many do documents 
uh, agreements, that a lot of unstructured da data, meaning very wor wordy, that they had to summarize, they had to extract the relevant information so that they can automate and optimize the way that they process the claims. So they used the Azure OpenAI, they were able to automate this um, and be much more efficient. And an interesting and controversial one is uh, uh, a partner we're working out of uh, New Zealand called uh, Soul Machines. And they basically provide uh, online avatars, di di digital avatars, uh, to personalize uh, customer call sen centers, um, which is a really interesting scenario. They are using Azure OpenAI to um, extract uh, real time the sentiment of the con conversation with the customer so that they can train these avatars to be more empathetic. So this is where we're heading. Um, great, and I want to leave you, my time is up, but I want to leave you with some considerations. Uh, there is uh, a lot of misconception around large lang language models, what they can do, what they can't do. You have a lot of different options now with grounding, with fine tuning, RAG, all these different me methodologies. Um, but I also invi invite you to consider these things as well as you evaluate or as you integrate LLMs into your uh, com companies to make sure that you know as the LLM is really good for this type of things, whether you, are, you, know, you need human-like con con content, whether you need to do three things at, at, at the same time, you know, whether you need to tran translate a document and extract like, some relevant uh, entities, and then you know, ge generate an email. If you want uh, prototyping and going to market fast, these are very par powerful mo models, so you know, this will be the right tool for the job. And then the last one is that if, you, um, you know, if you're willing to take a mo model that requires no or very little fine tuning. By the time we consider things like GPT-4, these are massive ones, so you will need all the capacity in the world to really fine, fine tune them. So anyway, I know it was a whirlwind of information, but again, uh, thank you so much for your time. And I'll be here if you have any questions or if you want to chat. Thanks.